What we need to understand is that Medellin sits in a valley. Those who can afford it live in the south. And usually, the less money you have, the higher up the mountains you're going to end up. The thing is, most of the jobs in Medellin are way down there. And getting to work for those who live up here is a challenge, to say the least. We are talking hours on foot or with the help of a shaky bus system just to get to the valley floor. But with the construction of the cable car system, it now takes a mere 20 minutes to get to the city or back home. Cable cars as public transit? That is what I call audacity. I want to experience firsthand this bold transport system. And in order to get to the cable cars, I have to take the metro. It's still the only one of its kind in Colombia, for now. I think the metro started exactly at the beginning of our transformation. It was not just a transport system, but an integration system. Santiago knows all about the fierce will to end inequality. He has traveled between Medellin and Johannesburg in South Africa for nearly half his life, developing a unique take on the urban challenges that our cities face. He is now Medellin's first chief resilience officer. Together, we head for the hilltop neighborhood of Santo Domingo, located in Comuna Uno. We are so proud of our metro system because we know that this is the true essence of, of how we've been able to move forward and to become a modern city and to be a more inclusive city. So it will come from everyone. If you try to damage or jeopardize the system, people will fight for it. Yeah, they have ownership. They, they have ownership. That's we, one of the most in interesting values of resilience is the value of learning. Every time you have an adversity and you overcome and you have time to reflect on that, is a learning process. That's why Medellin is such an important example for ourselves, but for the world, because we've been able to overcome major tragedies. We many times, we don't acknowledge that we are the city. Uh, cities are not roads or buildings or metro systems. Cities are people. The reason why they build is because we have a collective idea and around that collective idea, we construct relationships. You guys have been adapting freely from other cities. Do you find that to be a strength for Medellin, that you happily borrow and steal and whatever you can, <laughs> grab all the good ideas? Clearly, uh, and this is a great example of that. One of our leaders went into a winter holidays to Switzerland, and he was going to ski, and he saw one of the cable cars one there, and he said, what if we implement a solution like this for our city? And we're now writing it. Those ideas are being taken here, modified, and implemented, and that's how we tackle all our issues. Is it a problem that really the traffic is from up to down and then back up again? The citizens who live down there, they're not going up very often. If we talk about resilience, if we talk about social inclusion, you still have one-way streets, as it were. How do you fix that? People don't come here to, to have fun mm. or to, not even to have fun, to have friends. Mm. And that clearly shows you how we still separate from each other. I mean, this is absolutely what it's a holiday in Colombia, and everybody's just using the, the cable cars. It's, this is, I mean, it's a queue to get back down. But you should come at 4 o'clock in the morning because they're going to work. Uh -huh. And the only way to, to go to downtown and to the industrial side of, of, of the city is through the, the metro cable. And you will see, it's a 
10 times a bigger queue uh, because the jobs are not around you. Everything you're telling me about resilience, about transport, about how to create a, a better Medellin is all about people. You keep going back to people. Take away the queue. Yeah. And this won't mean anything. Yeah. The technical connection has been made and they can go and we can come here, but we still to identify that human connection. Thank you.